What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode number three of my series, Reseller Straight Talk. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of what it's like a day in the life of being a full-time reseller selling stuff online. And today I want to share four habits I have noticed from people who do a great job reselling, and I want to share those ideas with you. If you like them, please smash the like button and help me continue this channel. If you have other habits and things that help you be successful, please comment those in the, in the comment section below so other people can find value there. So the number one habit that I see that the most successful resellers have is they understand their numbers. I know that sounds really boring, but they understand how much net profit they're making per item, what categories sell better, even how many steps are required to process something. All of that matters and they're very numbers oriented. There's a reason that most of the six and seven figure resellers that I know are usually accountants and engineers in their occupation before they come become resellers or numbers people. They may be from Wall Street, they may be salespeople, they may be um, accountants, they might be engineers, professional level people who work with numbers, usually do much better than people who are great at picking or have an eye or are really good at shopping. These people generally, if I were to guess your success based on your previous occupation, I would say you have more stuff than you can list. Those people are in that scenario versus engineers and accountants look at the actual net amount of money that they're making. And if they're not making money, they don't continue to continue that task. But if you are really good at buying, then you just spend all of your time buying and you get yourself into trouble. Like it wouldn't hurt you to take a class in accounting or finance or engineering. How does something work? Engineers are basically designed to problem solve and a lot of problem solving is basic math. So that being said, number one habit is looking at their numbers and really understanding them. Number two, um, really, really successful resellers reinvest into their business. I know that sounds obvious, but if you buy something for 100 and sell for 200 and you have $165 less, that's now another opportunity where you can make that into something different. So $165 should be going back in the inventory first and foremost, maybe some process improvements like a, maybe a thermal printer or uh, you might also invest in the people, right? Maybe now you are at the point where you have more things than you have time to list, um, but then you definitely should invest into some processes or maybe a consultant to come help you make a process. Maybe you can hire somebody to look at what you're doing and help you fix a specific problem. Um, I don't normally do consulting, but if somebody were to email me and say, Chris, um, I want to list clothing but I have too men, too much stuff. I have a, 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 I can buy 500 items a week, but I can only process 100. What do I do? I can say, okay, well, the average person can process 40 items per day on average in a full-time period. So that's 200 items in a week, and that's usually you would need three, two or three people full-time in order to list 500 items a week. That's a lot. And this is like uh, one-off clothing that, provide, that you need measurements. Um, you need to understand some styling. It's pretty challenging, and if you get an opportunity to go to a place like a Plato's Closet, Buffalo Exchange, Clothes Mentor, whatever, stay, spend a day there and look at how many items they process per hour. I know because I spent a lot of time there looking to see where I can unload some goods locally for a profit rather than just um, you know, selling 100% online, or you can look into building some wholesale boxes to sell to other resellers. Um, this brings up the point, of when you look at the people who earn the most money, the I know this sounds very obvious, but most people don't think about that. They move the most product. I know that sounds obvious, but usually that means they're dealing in bulk, right? They're buying large lots of something. Those lots come in, they know who to call to get rid of certain parts of it. They know what to do with the most profitable parts. They know what to do with the parts that they need to dispose of. They go through more deals, more ideas, more looks, and that's how they're able to earn the most money. So whenever I hear um, people saying, oh, I only sell for 100 million percent ROI. I buy something for a dollar and sell for 100, I don't pick it up. Those people generally do not earn the most net. The people who earn the most net money, meaning the most money in your pocket, are the people who sell the most things. Even at a $1 profit, they, because they're doing so much volume, they just stumble onto products that do extremely, extremely well along the way. 
If you look at almost every single sales organization, the salespeople who pick up the low end deals get the most high end deals. And it's because you run into trends and you start to figure things out as you're looking really specifically into something. Okay, so um, reinvest your money in the new products, people, or processes. Third, calendar. You have to use a calendar. Really successful people know what times of days are doing things, they block stuff out. And I probably have mentioned this a hundred times on my channel, but they don't use to-do lists to run their day. Uh, to-do lists is where something goes to die. If it's not on your calendar, then it doesn't exist. And I think this is really important. And I'm now using the habit tracker way of life. I know I've mentioned this a couple of times as well, but you're starting to build your routine and build it into your day. And so, for example, I'm now doing customer service at the beginning of the day when I'm most fresh, because that's one of the areas that I struggle with the most. So I am working on customer service first and I have a designated time to do it. And it's on my calendar. It's, it's something that I do and I'm used to it now because I've been doing it for a few days and I really like that. And I want you guys to use a calendar and not a to-do list because a to-do list is kind of like professional procrastination. You can put it there and then just forget about it and that's not good enough. You need to actually get those stuff, those things done. Okay, next thing is the best resellers are always improving their earning potential. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but what that means is they're learning a new category or they're learning more about the category that they're in or how to do things faster. The faster you can do things, the more high, pro high profit items that you can find, you're actually increasing your hourly rate. So I have to give a shout out to one of my YouTube subscribers that was helping me. I was struggling myself with how to choose which opportunity should I do. Should I do like Amazon merch? Should I go all in the Amazon private label? Should I do eBay? YouTube generates a lot of money for me. Should I do affiliate income? I could run an entire business without any physical inventory, right? Um, I could also start getting into real estate investing. I could do stock trading. How do I determine what to do? And this is hard for me. When I hear Warren Buffett say, what you do is you figure out what you wanna do, and then you figure out what you need to do, and then you change the name of what you want to do to never do these things under any circumstance, and you only do what you need to do, and you will be successful. And nobody copies that because nobody wants to get rich slowly. They think that doing all of these things will make them rich faster, but that's not the case. You just pick one thing, get really good at it, and that's what gets you rich. And for me, I'm struggling to figure out what that is. Um, I admire people, honestly, that know I want to be this kind of seller. I don't know. Uh, I still struggle with that. That's why I've been a lot of doing a, a lot of dabbling. There are things in my life that I'm really sure of, and it's very easy. But I find that indecision is preventing me from going all in the one area. And anyway, my YouTube subscriber told me, write them all down on a list, write down your hourly output. What do you think you can earn per hour YouTube, per hour Patreon, per hour affiliates, per hour selling courses, per hour Amazon, per hour, etc. Then once you have that list, do the one that earns the most money or do the one that makes you the most happy. Okay, so you could you could weigh it out. You could figure out which ones take more effort, which ones make you more happy, which ones whatever. Rank it, then decide what's important to you. Is money more important than happiness? Is happiness more important than money? Money has a lot of stuff tied to it, like security, um, retirement, etc. There's a lot of stuff built into that. So that is how you basically narrow down what it is that you want to do. And it's very hard to do that, guys, because there's so many opportunities coming at you every which way. Um, and even myself, you know, I run a YouTube channel. Some people say that they appreciate the free content. This content is not free. I have um, ads um, before and after videos built in. Some of you have even said that there's up to 10 ads on every video. I actually don't know. I have the auto set up for YouTube to determine what the optimal number of ads is for the content. But by sharing your time with me, you are paying me. So I appreciate everyone who's taking the time to like, comment, or subscribe, or follow me on this journey, but it's not technically free. So I wanna be transparent about that. Some people may not understand that when you are watching a commercial before this video, I get a percentage for how long you watch the commercial, or if you click on that and, and go to it. Um, I've also experimented with going potentially ad-free. 
Um, like I have my own content. For example, I have a reseller guide that helps people make $500 a, a month, $1,000 a week or two grand a week. I don't have anything above that because that's all I can speak on from personal experience. But you can add that, like that, if you decide to purchase that, you can get, you can help me build this channel. But again, this goes back to the conundrum of how exactly do you focus? Um, when I look at the most successful resellers, they pretty much only sell on one platform, maybe two. And the people that sell on two, it's mainly cross listing. They don't, it's just the same thing, but on multiple platforms that are different marketing channels for them. So hopefully that's useful guys. If you guys like this type of content, I'll continue it. But I've seen the, I'm beginning a great response from my t um, Tuesday shows, um, which are more reseller straight talk, more ideas from that I have gathered from just reselling myself and from talking to other people who do this. Um, this is pretty much my life. Uh, also, last point, when you break down all this stuff into your day, you start to realize how much time this takes. And um, my final thought is, I was watching the show, I think it's called The Marvelous World of Miss Maisel. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. I've only seen one episode. Um, and in this episode, this lady is talking to, I think it's Miss Maisel, talking to an artist. And the artist says, um, she asks, why are you not in a relationship? Don't you feel lonely in here all here by yourself or something along those lines? And he says, well, painting this beautiful piece of art, my life's work, that's it. I've given every single thing I have to this painting and there's nothing left for me to give to anybody else. And I get it, okay? Like as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my entire life. Um, the only jobs I have had are sales jobs, which you basically create your own destiny. Um, I get it. I get what happens when you put all your life into something and you try to figure out if it'll work or not. Uh, I, I can understand the compromise of what that takes and everyone around you having to accommodate you in order for you to achieve that. Um, it's a very kind of a selfish endeavor to go on the self-actualization self path of becoming an entrepreneur and becoming that person that it, you know, isn't, it can pay all their own bills and wear all these hats and create value for the world. Um, there's no more admirable thing in my opinion than creating a business that can create value for other people and hire someone. If you can be a person in America that hires another American, that's incredible. That's why like, you know, even though I'm Taiwanese and technically Chinese, I prefer American stuff. I would much rather purchase American made if I can. I bought a mattress that's USA made. I, I'm thinking I'm a, like a lifelong Toyota supporter and I'm thinking about getting a Tesla because I want Elon Musk to make it. Like he gets all this crazy flack for maybe not being the best family man or whatever, but I, I understand the struggle. I understand how hard it is to build something like that. How many car companies have really made it? It's, it's extremely hard. I kind of want to support that cause because I like USA made things. All of my opportunities are from being born here. Like, um, I just want to support USA made if I can, you know? So that being said, um, I just think it's really, really, really admirable if you guys can create an endeavor that can actually hire somebody and, Anyway, that is what you need to create abundance to begin with. Like if you want to be able to take some time off, or you want to spend time, you have to use somebody else's time to get that time back. You can't, um, time's got to come from somewhere. And last thought, um, you know, over the past year or two, I have met a lot of friends who work for these different platforms. I consider them friends now that work at different platforms. I've gone to these different places to see how their operations work. These different selling platforms like uh, eBay and uh, Poshmark, etc. When you go there, you, you get to realize like just how incredible it is that a bunch of people have created something that can make a living for you. Uh, I just think we're not grateful enough for these online platforms. Um, and you can just surround yourself with people who are grateful for what they have left. Like for example, like I'm not a shill for eBay. I don't get paid by eBay to talk about stuff. Um, in fact, most of the eBay things that I set up cost me money. So on top of a lot of time to create, I have to pay for my own gas to drive over there. I have to take my own time to find all these people to create these networks. But I, I, I want to do that. Um, I want to be involved in the community. And I think that there's just this really unique bond with people who are entrepreneurs. So if you're out there trying to make this work, um, thank you for, for going putting yourself out there because just getting a job, that is, that is totally different. Um, 
One final thought. Sorry, this is a long video. Um, you know, some people ask me, like, can I really do this? And um, my normal reaction to some people is no. Um, I don't, I'm trying not to say no because I don't want to be rude or, or be that, you know, say no and then they create some monster that is able to do it or something. But if, if you have had a, a, a job for 20 years and then you want to transition into being an entrepreneur, it's totally different. So I don't want to say that you can't make it. I'm just saying, I wish someone had told me before I became an entrepreneur that you can become rich and wealthy without being an entrepreneur. That's something that I wish that I had understood. Um, and I also got called out for making a couple of personal finance videos and not talking about the basics. Well, here, I'm gonna talk about the basics for just a second. Living well below your means, having a high savings rate, that was not taught to me, okay? I was taught basically, you know, if, if financing is available, go that route because you can have it right now. A high savings rate and living well below your means affords you basically early retirement without being an entrepreneur. Uh, if you look at all these major blogs like Mr. Money Mustache or I'm recently, recently now following Beat the Bush, these people are financially independent, but they're, it's, from, it's from being really good at their job. So if you are watching this channel and you feel like you need to be an entrepreneur to be rich, that's not true. I, I don't believe that. I believe you can be really, really good at your job. And I consider most resellers, you have a job. You're not an entrepreneur. Your job is finding things and selling them. You don't have, it, you don't have a project that's scalable. You don't have any employees. You're essentially a freelancer. And that is the equivalent of a job. Because if you, let's say you took a month off, does your income take a break? It, can you take a two week paid vacation? Probably not. When you're reselling, people are afraid to take a two day vacation because they feel like their stores are gonna be turned off when they leave. That, and that's like a job. That's, that's not any type of, uh, um, that's not any type of freedom or, or like this, what people are talking about. When you're an entrepreneur, the only freedom is that you get to dictate what your schedule looks like. The rest of it, is um, pretty demanding. Like this is reseller street talk. Um, I, the point that I was trying to make like four minutes ago was that this whole endeavor that I am doing takes 66 hours a week, right? That's how much time it takes when I subtract, I mean, when I add up all the different things that I'm doing. So here, this is an insane sacrifice. We're talking about there's 168 hours of, of the, in a week and um, I'm sleeping, let's say 49 of those hours or I'm eating another 10 hours. That means I only have 100 hours left of being awake. And 66% of that is reselling um, or YouTube or um, helping people resell through Patreon. That's only 34 hours left. That's two thirds of my life already given to this endeavor, right? And so I have a pretty strict schedule with my fiance of around 25 hours of no phone time. So I'm hanging out with her. I don't bring my phone because I don't want to be distracted. I want to be present with her. And putting that work in over the last eight years is what has made our relationship really strong, in my opinion. I put in a lot of work into there because I'm thinking to myself, I want to be the best option for her. I want her to choose to be with me because it's the best option. That's how I have always looked at it. And I think that that's really important. Now, that being said, I don't have that type of commitment for any type of business endeavor. And I'm just being honest with you guys, I don't. Um, I wish that I knew like, I wanna be a YouTuber really, really hard. And then, then it would be easy. I could just say no to everything else because I wanna be a really, really good YouTuber, but I don't know. I'm actually still exploring exactly where I want to be, checking out different ways of doing things. My new endeavor right now is to figure out how to send items to thread up Lux. Um, I have a ton of great stuff and um, not enough time for certain items that are under a certain profit threshold. So it makes me wonder, all these items I'm picking up that are 10, $15 profit that are cheap, how do I get rid of those items, right? And earn that profit without just liquidating it in a wholesale box and earning a dollar an item, right? I don't, have, I don't want to create a large wholesale operation. That seems like too much work to me and it's way too messy and whenever I walk into any wholesale warehouse, um, especially like going down and look to Vegas and looking at those uh, distributors, Amazon ASD, good Lord, those guys have, 
warehouses that are football fields long full of stuff for you to sell. Like, I, where do you even begin when it comes to stuff like that? So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content. Please like and subscribe. You can always email me at chrisadelyrefinement.com if you have any questions. I appreciate it. Everyone take care.